Hey friends, real interesting experience this morning with a bit of a lesson in it for me. I, as I've mentioned many times on this post probably, I've been working with Annalise, with my daughter, on violin practice recently. She started a few months ago. She's doing really well. We've got our morning practice routine really installed. It's super fun. Um, and one thing about Annalise, which is true of her in every single domain of life, is she doesn't really like to be taught things. <laughs> She likes learning things, and she likes teaching things, but the process of having a teacher tell her something, or I'm not sure if this is true outside of, I think it's mostly a parent thing. Like she, she, with other teachers, I've actually asked teachers about this, and she, she's, she listens very well, and she, she really does seem to receive from teachers uh, very enthusiastically. From her parents, not so much. Um, in fact, one of my strategies has, has had to be with, with violin that Annalise and I teach one of her stuffed animals the music theory lesson for the day, like what the note names are, whatever it is we're working on. We teach Gerard, and Gerard sits over here and learns, <laughs> and, and that's, the, that's the structure that is an acceptable way to assimilate new information. So this is something that's just, it's true of her in, in, in many areas of life. This, Katie runs into this all the time with, with her stuff with Annalise. And so um, it's something I've been aware of. And I, like I said, I worked with it in, in, in various ways. But this morning, what showed up was, you know, so there's one of the things that we do when we're practicing violin is you have to get that violin up into position, get your arm position right, get your bow in place. And then not right now we're just learning to play rhythms on a single string. She's just starting to use some fingering, but we haven't actually started playing notes that are not just the open strings yet. So the main task is to play a rhythm on a string and kind of keep it on one string. Don't let the bow like go on to the other strings. And when we do this in her lesson, her teacher holds onto the bow and Annalise plays, and it looks effortless and it works great. And she seems to really love it. She likes it when her teacher helps her a little bit. Well, come home, start our practice session in the morning. And it is like, she just, she's like pulling that violin away. If I try to grab the bow and guide it all, She's like not having it, just total stonewall. No, I don't want to do it. Every once in a while, I've managed to kind of get through that. But, but generally, the answer is no, I want to do it myself. I want to do it all by myself. Okay. So this morning, I was coming up against that, and I was, and I, and I was like getting to that place of like kind of frustration because it's like, well, how are we going to actually practice this? If I can never guide, if I can never do the thing that in our lesson, you know, yesterday I was so diligent. I shot a video of her teacher doing it with her so that I could be like, look, here's what we're going to do. Annalise kind of enjoys watching a little, you know, 30 second video of what we're about to do. So I got that ready. We did that. Still didn't want me to touch the boat. And I was right at that point of kind of like, of, of like where me, Robin, my sort of like energy was, I just want to push through this. I just want to like, you know, make her do it, <laughs> which never works. And, and it's also not, you know, I, 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 there's an interesting aspect to the way that, um, our practice together, there's a kind of energy, you know, and, and this is something I know from my own practice as well. When you're practicing or when you're studying with a teacher, there are moments of resistance. And sometimes, even in my morning sessions with Annalise, sometimes that resistance is something that we just need to push through. We just need to do it anyway. 
there's resistance, sure, but we're going to do it anyway. And I have learned both to be really sensitive and not to push too hard, but, but sometimes also to be willing simply to push through something. If it's, if it's just resistance, push through it. Don't, don't let it become a kind of like, oh, well, I don't want to push my agenda as the parent onto the, you know, like I can, you can get, I can get caught in that and miss the point of like, no, let's just do this because sometimes just, just the act of, of continuing to do the work is all it takes to really kind of open the next door. However, there are also times when that resistance is not simply something that we need to just that's just a matter of doing it anyway. It's a matter of something feels off. And this morning, my sense of the moment was something is off. This is more resistance than, this is a kind of resistance that I can't simply push through. And furthermore, I don't even know how I would push through it because if she's not willing to do the exercise with me, what am I gonna do? hold her in position and make her play the violin like not only is that kind of you know not the right vibe but it's also not the it, it would never work it's not actually practically possible so I took a step back and I said all right what can I do here and I finally came around to saying honey you know if you want to do it on your own We'll, we'll compromise for today. You can do it on your own, but if but if I see something and I want to make a comment, you ha you have you got to listen to it. You have to at least try what I'm suggesting. And she said, "Okay." Or Papa, you could hold the bow the way Miss Natalie holds the bow. And I went, "What?" I said, I'm not holding the bow the way Miss Natalie holds the bow. And Annalise said, no. No, Miss Natalie just holds the very tip of the bow. And I went, oh, okay. Let me try that. So she gets the bow, gets the violin up, gets the bow up. And I just put my fingertips on the very kind of like this little nub on the back of the bow, a little screw that tightens the strings. And I touch it. I have a gentle hand on her elbow and she starts playing and I could feel in the way that I was holding the bow, I could feel, oh, now I'm not doing it for her. She's doing it. All I'm doing is lightly guiding it and I'm kind of following along a little bit, but, I, but I'm not, I'm not playing for her. And she and she was like totally happy now to have me guiding the bow because now I'm not pushing her. I'm not manhandling her. I'm not like forcing her arm to do something. She's actually got all the freedom to move and all just with my little light touch, I can just do the little tiny bit of guiding that keeps her sort of, you know, on, on the right string and in the center of the of the, you know, the bow, I don't know what you call it, the bowing patch of the strings. Um, so I was like, wow, wow, what a lighter touch won't do. You know, it, I was, I was, and I, and I, I was so glad that I, I was so glad I didn't try to push because not only did she, so as soon as I as soon as I took took a step back and said, "Okay, I, everything in me wants to make you do this my way right now, but I'm not going to do that. I'm gonna, I'm just because I that's not even an option. You know, I might want that. There might be a kind of like um, superficial impulse in me towards that because I'm frustrated, but that's not actually an effective path forward. Let me just check that." And then not only did she agree to the next thing I suggested, but she came out with information. It's like she, in, she taught me something this morning. She showed me something that
that I did not know. I was not that conscious of how her teacher was doing this. So I couldn't really do it the same way. I, I got the, I, I, I suddenly, it was almost like by having my hand just on that bow and letting it slide, like I, it was like I was going for a ride with just a little bit of guidance and completely changed the energy of the entire session. Completely. I mean, after that, she just didn't want to stop playing. She came out and played for 15 more minutes before breakfast. We were late for breakfast because she was too busy playing. That lighter touch. Oh, my God. And it made me, it made me, it, it's so parallel to other circumstances in my life where I have the impulse to like, I want to make this happen now. I want to do this. I want to make make it this way. You know, I want I want this. I want it this way. Um, you know, and I think I'm reasonably sensitive. I don't I don't try to act like that a lot. I I can usually feel when my impulse is coming from that kind of attached frustration. I'm pretty good about catching it. But, you know, day in, day out with a four-year-old, there's going to be moments of, like, I just, I my, my patience is at the end now. I don't know what else, <laughs> I don't know what else to do. And I was so glad that I just took a light approach, let her lead, and all of a sudden, a, a new world opens up. I had the same thing happen with her couple days ago when we we were at the we were um went to our last day there's a swimming pool that we go to over the summer it's closed now and we we were at our in our in the swimming pool for the last day and I'd been wanting to practice her back float with her for uh an entire you know the entire summer basically and she um would never let me practice back float. And on the very last day, I was like, okay, I had no agenda, just went in to, to play and have fun. All of a sudden, she lets me practice back float with her. She just does it out of the blue. That lighter touch. <laughs> that lighter touch, Robin. <laughs> Receive that. So yeah, that's where I am today, people. Thanks for watching. Much love. I'll see you tomorrow.